Hi, this is Chef Alan Tatro with Global Sugar Art, and today we're going to be talking about striped cakes, specifically working with buttercream and making beautiful striped designs on the sides of the cake. In order to do that, you have to have the right tools. So uh, Wilton and Atico and other companies, PME, have come out with different tools, different size combs. This is the Atico comb. This is a little narrower. Of course, it's metal versus plastic. And then PME also has some out in an acrylic. So the combs that you see like this are designed to give a shape on the side of the cake. They're not designed to make the stripes like this. So today we're primarily going to use the one with the teeth on it like this. Now there are a lot of YouTube videos out on making striped buttercream and I don't think they give you really all the secrets that you need to make this work. And today we're going to cover those secrets so that even a beginner, someone with very little experience in decorating, is going to be able to produce this technique. I guarantee you when, you're going to, when I'm done, you'll see how easy this is to do. The basis is your buttercream. In order to get the striping to work properly, you need a buttercream that's at least 40% uh, butter. The, the amount of fat in it has to be at least 40%. I would say 50% up to 100%. If you like using a buttercream that's, uh, that you use only butter in and then confectioner sugar and some sort of a liquid and flavoring, that's fine. If you like a whiter icing and you want to use some white vegetable shortening in it like Crisco or a Sweet Tex or something like that, make sure that 50% of that or, or at least 40% of it is going to be butter. And I'm going to be posting a recipe uh, for an ice cream specifically used for striping. So this is the consistency of my icing. And you can see how thick this is. This is actually perfect for decorating uh, and for icing a cake. It's a, it's a nice, fluffy, creamy icing. And it's delicious. But if I use that on the side of a cake, I'm not going to be able to stripe very successfully with it. It sort of rips and, and gouges and leaves air holes as I'm trying to comb the side of the cake. So I have a cake ready to go. I've crumb coated it and I put it in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. You don't want to freeze it because if you put a warm icing or any icing on a frozen cake, it's going to harden up immediately and you're not going to be able to comb the cake. So maybe refrigerate for, a, for 30 minutes and then take it out and you're ready to go. Now, I have a pot of hot water. Let me just get this together. And I want to go through the step of warming your icing. This is the critical key to having a successful striping technique on a cake. So I'm going to take this thick buttercream and I'm going to slightly, slightly warm it. Now, I don't want to put it in the hot water uh, with the bowl touching the water and leave it there because it's going to be too hot and it will melt the butter. You want to soften the butter, but you don't want it to be able to run out. You don't want to melt it. So it's, it's a little tricky. If you're a real beginner at this and you don't have a lot of experience, don't use boiling water. Just use good hot water and you'll be fine. So a metal or a glass bowl is going to work better. I'm just putting it in there for about four or five seconds. And if you can get a good close-up of this, I want you to watch how this icing starts softening up. And I'm going to put it back on. Now I brought this water almost to a boiling point. And you can see when I flip this over, you see how shiny that is? That is the fat, the, the butter in there that is softening. And you'll see how this icing is getting really nice and soft. And I've let it sit in that water probably less than 8 or 10 seconds. And we're going to do that again. If you're using an Italian buttercream or a Swiss meringue buttercream, you may not need to do this because it has a high ratio of fat to begin with. And with that beautiful meringue base that they have, uh, they tend to be really nice and creamy icings that smooth very, very, very easily by themselves. Okay, that's about the consistency I want. So you can see that it's looser, it's softer, and mix it really well. And I'm just going to go one more time. 
The other thing is if you're making an Italian buttercream, because you're adding a boiling syrup to it, um, that icing is going to be warm when it gets off the mixer. So it's ready to go anyway. Okay, that icing is ready. I'm going to put this aside for a minute because we're going to use this hot water again. Bring my cake over here. And we're going to start by covering. We're going to do the bottom first. You can see how easy this is to spread. It's super creamy and smooth. The icing only needs to be as thick as the depth of the comb, of the teeth on the comb. So for instance, if you're using the ac acrylic PME comb, it's a lot thicker. So you need a, a thicker coat of icing. Uh, the Wilton one is not as deep, uh, so about a quarter inch would be enough. Okay. I try to work quickly so that the icing stays nice and soft. And if you see any spots that it looks a little shallow, just go back in, fill those in, and we'll put some icing on the top. A lot of this is going to come off with the comb, so you'll see that I actually have extra icing when I'm done. And we'll be able to smooth this more uh, later, so it doesn't have to be perfect now at all. Okay, the only reason I went around it with the spatula was to make sure that I had straight sides and that it looks all pretty even. Now we're ready to go with the comb. Now, what I like doing, even though it's a plastic comb, is I dip it in the hot water, just a few seconds on each side. If you have a longer pan, it would be easier. And I'm going to dry it off. I'm not using a wet comb. I'm using a dry comb and it's just warm. It's not hot. Put it right to the cake and try to go around in one sweep if you can. And that doesn't look too bad at all. Now you'll find that, let me get this off. You can see spots like this where it missed. If I don't fill those in and go over it again, the stripe won't show um, when, I fill, when I fill in the, uh, the voids on the next round of icing. So we're going to go back in and do a little touch up. But pretty much this is a, a nice coat here. Okay. So I've touched up a few of the areas. I'm going to dip the comb in a second again. Dry it. If you're using an icing that's only made with butter, you probably don't even need to warm up the comb at all. All right, so here we go. And there we have, I think, that's a pretty good striping on a cake. So now what will happen, I'm going to refrigerate this. I can, I can smooth in the top a little bit. Again, the top will be dealt with when we're all done. So I'm not worried about this very much at all right now. This cake is now ready for the refrigerator. You could freeze it for 15 minutes or refrigerate it for about a half hour. My preference is to refrigerate it and that will set up this icing. Now the reason we're using butter is twofold. Number one, it smooths out much better the first time when you, the, the step we just did. And secondly, it, it refrigerate, when you chill it, it becomes very firm. Well, a white vegetable shortening like Sweet Tex or Crisco does not get as firm. And we want that to be rather hard on the outside when we add our next coat of icing to make the stripes. So this is ready for the refrigerator. And I have another cake all prepped and ready to go. 
Um, I'd like you to get a nice close-up of this cake. And I want you to see how it's not as smooth as the cake we just did. This is one I did before I realized that that little step of heating up the icing would make such a difference. Um, it was sort of a learn as you go process. And I kept thinking, why can't I get this smooth? Why is this icing not working the way I want it to work? And, and I thought, I just need to heat it up. And that was the trick. It works perfectly well. So you can see that this isn't as, uh, as smooth, but it's still gonna come out fine. The other tip I wanna give you is when you're making the icing, use cane sugar, don't use beet sugar, like Domino's cane powdered sugar, but beet sugar does not make as smooth as icing as cane sugar does. So I have some seafoam green icing already. Now this time the icing does not need to be heated up because I'm not, being, I'm not combing it. I do like to stir it up, especially if it's been mixed for a while. Okay. And all you're going to do now is apply this in a nice thin coat over the existing buttercream. If, if your first batch of icing, the, uh, the comb part, isn't firm enough, it's not chilled enough, um, it'll all smear together. So it's really important that, that, you, uh, that you refrigerate it and you give it the time it needs. There are two ways to do this, and I'm going to be showing both of them to you. This is, uh, this is the technique you would use if you want to color all of it the same. If I want all the stripes to be this, this seafoam green. If I wanted all the stripes to be different or uh, layer them differently, I can pipe in. And I'm going to be showing you that technique after. Okay. Okay, I think I've got it all. Make sure you filled in all the uh and I try to scrape off a little bit of it that I know I'm not going to need. Just making sure it's all filled in. And now we're ready to reveal the stripes. You can use either a plastic uh, straight edge. My preference is always metal for this very reason. I can dip this in the hot water and get it nice and warm and it's going to uh, make a beautiful smooth finish and will cut through that cold icing very quickly. It doesn't need to be super hot. Um, you do want to dry it though. And here we go, right to the front. Make sure it's nice and straight and take off small layers at a time. Don't try and go deep the first time. Remember the icing at the bottom or the original base icing is cold. Um, so you want to just gently take off, sort of shave off a little bit at a time. And it's starting to reveal Okay. Oops. There. That is looking pretty good. I'm going to go around one more time really lightly. You can see how much icing I've taken off. Get the comb nice and clean and warm. And I'm just going to go over one more time to smooth it out. This is one of the Fat Daddio's uh, bench scrapers, by the way. It's my favorite tool for icing a cake. And those are available on our website. Okay, we have stripes? Yes, we have stripes, all right. Um, 
that can go in the sink. And now I'm going to take an offset spatula and I can just very gingerly cut off this blue off, off the top. The other option I can do is I can put blue icing on the top and um, or this green icing and make the top the same color as the stripes, but I want it white. Okay. Now when I refrigerate this cake, I'll be able to come back and smooth this even more on the top if I, if I really wanted to. I'm going to be piping a border on the top, so I'm not too concerned. There. Okay. That is ready to go. And now I would put this back in the refrigerator before I finish it. If you're having trouble and you end up scraping too much icing off and you get down to the raw cake or you just mess it up, just take a spatula and carefully scrape all the buttercream off and that becomes your solid color and start all over. You don't have to say the project is ruined because it didn't work the very first time. Um, if the cake is chilled, uh, I always make my cake the day before that, that helps because uh, the cake is a little more firm to work with. But if the cake is chilled and you've done a nice crumb coat, you really you shouldn't have any problems. The other thing that I find is when you're holding the comb, remember if you're holding the comb at an angle like this, you have very little room between the cake and the comb and the icing squishes in there and it builds up and that will pull and tear the icing. Try to hold the comb perpendicular to the cake as you're, as you're pulling. If you notice I started in the front, and I, ran, and I sort of came around to the side so I could do the whole cake in one motion. So I gradually came this way while I was spinning, but I kept the comb at a uh, perpendicular angle to the cake. And that gives you more room for the icing to build up without squishing and pulling and tearing. So that's one of the other tricks. So this is ready to go in the, uh, uh, the refrigerator. So I have another cake ready to go. It's been in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes and it has about eight stripes in it. So I'm gonna do three, three, um, and two. So I have a dark yellow, a medium yellow, and a pale yellow so that we can get a nice ombre effect. So all you're gonna do is fill in the area in between the stripes or to make the stripes. There's one. This requires a little steadier hand. Of course, if you're using a larger cake comb with, with large, larger stripes, it's, uh, you will use a larger tip. In this case, I just cut the end off a pastry bag. There's the dark. Now we're going to go to the medium. and the palest one at the top. You might ask, why do we start with the dark color? And the answer is very simple. It provides a foundation for the cake. It, it weights the cake down. If you put the dark colors at the top, it just doesn't look the same. Um, the darker colors when you're decorating cake will almost always look better if they're at the bottom of the cake. That is ready to go. I'm going to first take off, a, let me grab a bowl here. First going to take off a layer, smooth it out. And then I'm going to heat up this bench scraper. My water's cooling down a little bit, I can tell, but it's still warm enough to work. Dry it off. Again, I'm taking off thin layers at a time. I'm not taking off an awful lot at one time. That's actually looking pretty good already.
Oh yeah. That looks good. And because the very top stripe was white, I don't have to deal with any color coming off onto the top of the cake. It is okay to leave the, the, uh, a knife or even your scraper wet if you choose. Um, I used to always uh, smooth my cakes with a hot wet knife and it works very, very well. It's just that if you're going over the side of a cake over and over and over, sometimes it can cause a problem with, uh, of the colors running. Uh, if you get a droplet of water on that yellow, it will run down the side of the cake and there's nothing you can do to fix that. That's why I always use a dry uh, uh, bench scraper when I'm doing the side. But if I'm doing the top of the cake, I don't mind using a wet knife. It actually works really well. And I have a, one of our gum paste flowers ready to go. All we need to do is move this to a nice cake stand. And we have a very simple cake, um, easily decorated and ready, ready to present. And I think anybody would be proud of this on any table or as a gift or for whatever occasion you want to make. One thing I wanted to mention on this cake, what I did while the icing was still uh, fresh, right after I combed the sides and, the, and revealed the stripes, I used just a triangle that I got from a geometry set, put it down on the table, and then I used my spatula. I dipped it in the warm water and dried it. And then I just followed this and I came right up the top like this. And that's how I got those stripes on the side of the cake. It's just a little twist on, on an old favorite, just taking the stripes and adding these, uh, um, these, these side stripes to it. So again, just get yourself, you can get them in different angles, lay it straight down and then just follow it right up to the top of the cake. It's super easy to do. So that's that little trick. Okay, and now we're gonna finish this cake. I have a pastry bag with a tip 1B. That's a Wilton tip. Uh, let's get some icing. So I have my seafoam green. I forgot to mention when I'm making a, a color like the seafoam green, and it's a very pastel color, and it's kind of, it's not hard to get. Uh, it, it's just a leaf green with a little bit of turquoise in it. If you want to successfully make a really nice pastel color, never mix, never drop the, uh, the color directly into the white icing. It's always going to be too dark, and you can't combine colors together. One drop of blue or turquoise and one drop of green is going to be much darker than you want. Always pre-mix them with some white icing and then add a little bit of that blended color into white to get that nice pastel color. So this is a spatula stripe technique. I'm just going to take some icing and I have a nice big 18 inch key seal bag. Put the spatula down in the bag and push it toward the front. So that's all going to be on one half of the bag. And then on the other half of the bag, you're going to push in the turquoise or the, the seafoam green. I can't seem to get my colors straight today. All right. And squeeze out until you get both colors, and here we go. I like turning the bag in my hand so that different colors appear on different sides. And we have some nice sprinkles. These are by Sprinkle Pop. This is called their Signature Sprinkle Mix, one of my favorites. And obviously I chose my sprinkles before I chose the colors of my cake. So just don't do your striping and then say, oh, I don't have anything that goes with that color. 
Think ahead, look at the sprinkles if you're going to use them, and then decide the colors of your cake. That's a very simple striped cake with the um, sprinkles on it. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Again, check out my new recipe for the buttercream icing specifically used for striping. And we're also going to be using this for textured finishes uh, in another upcoming video um, as well. Thanks for watching, and you can buy all the supplies at globalsugarart.com. Have a great day.